<clears throat> hello guys and uh welcome back uh to the channel so now guys uh uh over this festive period i thought i would deviate somewhat uh from our usual political diet and we deviate into a lifestyle life event sort of uh videos uh which is part of uh, what we do but we don't do it often enough so um guys i came across this um storyline which i wanted to share with you guys it's a uh, one of those cautionary tales of uh, a returnee uh, from abroad and his experience trying to integrate himself back into the Nigerian society. Pardon me, well, what's that verb? Pardon me. Yeah, so it's uh, one of those uh, cautionary tales of a returnee uh, from abroad back to Nigeria uh, uh, and his attempts to integrate back into a society that he has been out of for so many decades and uh, what uh, that journey uh, turned out to be how that Johnny panned out for him. So let me get straight into it. Uh, uh, Adedeji just came back to Nigeria from Los Angeles, where he had lived and worked for 20 years as a cleaner and a menial laborer. His friend Tayo and Jelili were so happy to receive he, their childhood friend, who at 45 is yet to be married and have children. His last 20 years have been full of struggles, denials, and self-sacrifice. He told his friends, you guys don't know what God has done for you. Look at you people. You have your own houses, wives, children, and everyone in the community can easily identify with you. Unlike me, many people do not recognize me. Some even call me Baba London. No wife, no children, no house. No one would employ me at my age, except I start a business. I have lost so much to my 20 years odyssey. I have lost my early life to hustling. So that's uh, how he has come back to place himself at the mercy of his friends. Adedeji traveled to the United States at the age of 25 in search of greener pastures. His two friends, also 44 and 46, were professional accountants and lawyers respectively. Deji sold his house in Los Angeles and relocated back to Nigeria for fear of old age. A royal inheritance being a prince and family and his love for his people. Although he lost all his early life to struggling abroad, he still came back with 85 million naira, his life savings. Deji believed he could build a house, start a business, marry a woman, and start a life all over with his money. Deji called his friends and explained to them his plans to start a new life in Nigeria. He also declared that he had 40 million naira cash with him. So, um... Just to pause there for a moment, uh, it looks as though DJ has not come back as a total JJC and a naive idiot. Because uh, if he sold his house for 85 million uh, uh, naira, his house in Los Angeles for 85 million naira, and he has declared to his friends that he's coming back with 40 million naira, that is to say that he has made sure he has uh, kept private to himself in excess of half of the money that he had available to him. So he has not come back home a total idiot. So we carry on. Let's take that paragraph again. Uh, Deji called his friends and explained to them his plans to start a new life in Nigeria. He also declared he had 40 million naira cash with him. His friends are uh, confirmed with the huge amount, you won't have any problem starting all over again. A week after they took him to a property at GRA in their town, the property goes for 25 million naira, according to Jelili, who has been bargaining with the seller. Seeing the property, they loved it and paid immediately. On their way uh, home, uh, on their on their way home, uh, it, well, it should it should, it should be it was. So let me read it as it should read. It was on their way home that he met Tommy. Tommy is a nurse at the state teaching hospital. She is tall, beautiful, curvy, and jovial. They started talking, and the rest is history. As time goes by, Deji 
uh, Adedeji realized he is left with 2 million naira from the 40 million naira declared to his friends earlier on. What happened? On the very day he declared 40 million naira to his friends, his accountant friend came back at night to ask, to ask for a loan of 5 million naira. Deji, a simple and generous man, asked what the money was for. Tayo said he had collected a bank loan to build his house five years uh, before, before that period, and if he didn't pay back by next week, he would lose his house. Ah, Deji said, he dashed his friend 2.5 million naira. Uh, Tayo was amazed. He thanked him and left joyfully. The second day, Jelili came with his wife and children crying. He said his wife has been diagnosed with breast cancer in the previous month, and now the doctor is saying she's uh, and now the doctor is saying if she is not operated on in the next one month, the family will lose her. Uh, Adedeji became very afraid hearing this. He asked. How much are we talking about? Your wife won't die when I am here, God forbid. 2.5 million, Jalili said. How much do you have on you, Deji asked. We have used the money on us to buy drugs for R, uh, Jalili submitted. Oh, no problem, said Adedeji. Adedeji wrote a check for 2.5 million naira in Jalili's wife's name and handed it to them. They were so happy and prayed for him before they registered their leave. Adedeji's, families, Adedeji's family members did not spare him as well. They will come with one problem or the other, which he usually absorbed. However, what is amazing is that everyone wants his wristwatch, uh, wristband, shoes, jackets, trousers, sunglasses, and necklaces. It is as if they want to run him naked. In the few months of his stay at home, Adedeji spent 38 million naira and dashed out almost all his belongings to relatives and friends who had suddenly become beggars. Uh, he has a small diary where he kept daily expenses. Out of the 38 million naira spent, he, he had only spent 25 million naira for the house, 2.5 million naira purchase of car and upkeep on himself. The remaining 10 million naira had been spent on others. Adedeji called his friends and asked for the way forward. Since he needed to start a business, he had only 2 million naira left. His partner, Tommy, had been continuously disturbed by her friends to ask Adedeji to buy her a car. Tomi was a great woman who believed in hard work. She felt she would buy herself a car in due season and should not be a liability to the poor man. Everyone around Adedeji, without planning it, wanted to rip him apart. His mother, who is living in a house built for her by Adedeji, is also complaining that he was not, do he was not doing enough for her. Adedeji is getting tired of too many demands from friends and relatives in just a few months of his stay at home. It is now glaring that if he does not stop doling out money to people as usual, he will soon become wretched. In one afternoon, a guy who also doubles as a plumber working in his property called him on a phone. Uh, let me take that again. Uh, uh, in one afternoon, a man who also doubles as a plumber working in his property called him on phone to advise him about his relatives and friends in his words. Egmo, you are a nice person, I know, but please trust nobody. Do you know that Mr. Tayo padded the house price with 5 million naira? I do not expect him to still be amongst the people that will be saying evil things about you. Even Egmont Jelili lied that his wife had breast cancer to collect 2.5 million naira from you. What are you talking about? Deji asked. Well, I know you did not know that the property was originally sold for 20 million. It was Egmont Tayo that added 5 million to it. He said you were a very stingy man 
And if it does not add anything to the house price, he won't get anything from you. He also said for the 20 years you have stayed in the United States, he did not owe you five cobble. Are you sure of what you are saying? Are you sure, young man? Deji asked angrily. Sir, please calm down. This is Nigeria, oh. I am telling you because on my way to work this morning, I saw him with Brother Jalili and two other guys. I don't know them. Uh, they were talking about a business for you or so. I didn't know the exact thing, but I heard them talking about their own commissions. Sir, all I want to say is please be careful and don't tell anyone or act in any way that will make your friends know I said anything to you. Our people are very dangerous. Money is very hard to come by these days and people will do anything for money. I don't want you to lose. Uh, have a nice day, sir. The guy dropped the call. So uh, it carries on. Adedeji was flabbergasted. He could not believe his ears. His best friends have turned against him to be his worst enemies after all he has done for them and their families. In the next day, his friends came as expected with two other guys. The guys said they own a quarry in Abelkuta that is worth 5 million naira and would love to sell it to him uh, because they are prepared to relocate abroad. They estimated the quarry to originally be worth 20 million naira, but because they needed cash, they would like to sell to him for 5 million naira. Adedeji asked his friend about his friends about the deal. They said they have confirmed it and it is so real that it is even unbelievable that the guys agreed to sell at that rate. Well, since I came back from the States, I have been thinking of a business. I think I like this one. However, Tayo and Jelili and Jelili, um, uh, however, Tayo and Jelili are aware I only have 2 million naira left on me, and I will have to maintain myself too from the money. I don't have enough to buy your quarry this time, I am afraid. Tayo and Jelili heard, uh, let's talk to this guy in camera, we will get back. Uh, a few minutes later, they came in and said the guys had agreed to collect 1.5 million naira that he could pay the remaining money once income starts coming in. Adedeji at this point was able to link what the guy told him on the phone and what was playing out. He told his friends, if I want to buy this quarry, you guys will have to help me raise 3.5 million naira and we will have to pay these guys once and for all. There is only 1.5 million naira. Uh, there is now. There is there is now. There is sorry. Let me take that again. There is no how 1.5 million naira would be enough to process a United States visa for two people. He then turned to the guys. Please go. I have your numbers. I will call you tomorrow on the deal. He submitted. The guys left. His friends told him they have not even eaten since yesterday, and they have also been thinking he could help them with some money. Adedeji looked at the two of them, sobered and asked them, and uh, Adedeji looked at the two of them, sobered and asked them never to come around him, around him again. You guys are traitors and wicked. They both denied the allegations, but Adedeji made them write statements with the police that they would not come around him again. The question is, what was Adedeji's offense to his friends, relatives, and community? Over the years, I have seen how we unreasonable. Uh, over the years, I have seen how we how, how we unreasonably dupe and ungratefully exploit Nigerians in diaspora. We have this wicked spirit of entitlement. We act as if money grows on the streets in London, Tokyo, Paris, New York, and others. We are never just on these hustlers. Yet, we sleep 18 hours in 24 hours that makes one day. Whilst our brothers and sisters 
work out their asses almost 18 hours every day. A Londoner will send a phone to you. You will call him and say, I don't want this phone you sent. I want iPhone 11 Max. My friend said it is too far small for my level. If you have levels, why are you depending on another person to buy you a phone? What is wrong with you buying yourself your desired phone? Sure, stop living the life of an ungrateful beggar. An, Amer an American came home. We want to collect everything he or she is wearing and leave him naked if possible. And at times, when they are naked, we also want to end their lives. So it goes on and on, but uh, it's just really the cautionary tale. So that's just the tale of an experience of a, a, a returnee from Nigeria that got picked apart by the people that he relied on to help him settle back into the community. And, and that story of this particular Adedeji uh, guy is not anything unique or peculiar to him. It's a very commonplace story. Uh, it's just thank, thank God that the guy escaped with his life. The guy was working as a cleaner and a manual laborer in the, in the United States. So anybody that lives abroad knows what that means. Grueling job, cold winters, heavy lifting, you know, just the low, low, low rungs of society, just slogging it out for 20 odd years to accumulate enough of a mass for him to return home, uh, still relatively, uh, at the age of 45, he still has the window to re to still build a life for himself. But even that window was uh, about to be permanently shut on him that by, by uh, people that he had relied on to help him settle back home. So that's the cautionary tale of the returning from abroad. Is one of countless stories along those lines. But what are your thoughts on this? Come share thoughts about all this with me in the comment section. So I'll leave you here. Carry the conversation within the comment section. But here, I say, peace.